Hello and welcome to this tutorial. With this video I'm going to show you how to configure Command Central to use secure connections. While Command Central already uses the SSL protocol and comes with default certificates, we strongly recommend that you replace the default certificates when using Command Central in a production environment. Before we start configuring the custom certificates, let's review the high-level steps we should complete. First, we have to generate custom certificates and import them in a custom key store and trust store. Then, configure the command central server HTTPS port to use the custom key store. Then, configure the local platform manager HTTPS port to use the custom key store. Set up an SSL connection between the command central server and the local platform manager. Configure the HTTPS ports of all remote platform managers and finally set up an SSL connection to the CLI client. Now, let's go over the first step in more detail. To generate custom certificates, we need to use a key generation tool. This article shows you how to generate custom certificates with the Java key tool. Of course, you can use a different tool. When you're done, you should have a root certificate JKS file, a platform manager JKS file, a command central.cer file that you can import into the browser, and a certificate for each platform manager node that this command central manages. After you have generated the certificates, you should import them into the trust store for the CAY and the command central server itself. Then, Copy all the files to the target command central server, the CLI client, and all managed platform manager nodes. Note that before you start configuring the HTTPS ports and SSL connections, you should change the connection ports for all platform manager nodes to HTTP. Now, let me go to the example environment and go through the configuration steps one by one. This is the command central server machine I am using in our example. You can see that I have copied the custom certificates in a local folder on the machine. In a production environment, you should keep these files in a secured folder with controlled user access. Now, let's log on to the command central web user interface. In our example, we have one platform manager installed on the same host as Command Central. This is our local installation. As you can see, it is now set to communicate over the default HTTPS port. I'm going to switch to the default HTTP port and disable the Use SSL option. Now, Command Central and Platform Manager connect over HTTP. So we are ready to configure the command central HTTPS port to use the custom key store. At this point, we are still using the default demo certificate for command central. When we check the certificate information in the browser, we can see that the default certificate was generated by SAG, there is a generic common name, and this certificate was not signed by a trusted authority. Because we generated the custom certificates for a specific host, we'll configure the HTTPS port of Command Central to use this custom certificate. Let's see how to do this. Go to the Command Central instance in the local installation, click the Configuration tab, and select ports from the drop-down list. Now we can either edit the default HTTPS port or create a new port. I'm going to create a new port. Click the plus sign and select HTTPS. Let's set the new port to enabled and enter a name for it. I'll enter 8191 as the port number. Now let's scroll down to the security configuration. The alias of the custom key store is CCE root, it's of type JKS, and it's located in the certificates folder on the same machine as command central. Let me type the key store password. In this example, I used manage. Now let me save the changes 
and test if the new port is working. I'll open a new browser tab and try to access the command center web UI over the new port. Of course, now this new host is not familiar to the browser, so I need to add a security exception. And here you go! Now Command Central successfully loads over the new port. Now, let's verify that our certificate information has been updated. I'm going to view the certificate in the browser. As you can see, now the certificate displays the host name as the common name, and the other details have also changed. If the browser still indicates that the certificate cannot be trusted, you should add the .cer file as a trusted root certificate authority in it. The steps to do this vary for each browser, based on its type and version, so I'm not going into detail here. The next step is to configure Platform Manager to use the custom key store. The steps here are pretty much the same as the ones we just did. I'll go to the SPM instance, go to the Configuration tab, and select ports. This time though, I'll update the default HTTPS port. It's up to you whether to create a new port or update the existing one. Click Edit and scroll down to the security configuration. Here, I'll enter the location of the custom key store. The key alias is SPM node and it's of type JKS, so I don't have to update these fields. I'll enter the key store password and click Save. The difference between this key store file and the one we used for Command Central is that I created this JKS file with a wildcard so that it works for all servers in this network. In this way, we can use the same key store for all platform managers in the same network. You can also generate host specific certificates for each platform manager and configure them for each server. Before Command Central can connect to Platform Manager over the updated HTTPS port, we have to update the Command Central Server SSL configuration to point to the Custom Trust Store, which contains the Platform Manager certificate. To do this, I'll go to the Command Central instance, click Command Central Server, and go to the Configuration tab. Here, I choose General Properties from the drop-down list and go to Outbound SSL Connection Settings. I'll click Edit and enter the location of the custom trust store file and then type the trust store password. Also, I'll clear the Ignore Host Verification checkbox to get Command Central to verify the server host names against the trust store. To verify that the updated HTTPS port for the local platform manager is working properly, I'll go to the local installation and update the port number to 8093. I should also enable the Use SSL option. Let's refresh the page. We see that the installation is back online. This means that Command Central now successfully communicates with SPM over the updated HTTPS port which uses the custom certificate. Now that you have set a custom HTTPS port for the local platform manager, you can configure custom HTTPS ports for all remote platform managers in your network. Our final step is to update the CAY to use the custom trust store and SSL connections. To do this, save a copy of the default CC properties file in a different location. In a production environment, Make sure that you store this custom CC properties file in a secure location with limited user access. Open the custom properties file in a text editor. Update the command central URL to point to the custom HTTPS port, which in our case is 8191. Then, in the SSL trust store file property, specify the location of the custom trust store and type the trust store password. In my case, the password is managed, so I don't need to update this property. Note that you can encrypt passwords here by adding add secure in front of the property. Set SSL trust all hosts to false and save the file. Now, let me open the CLI. To set the CLI to use the SSL connection settings from the custom properties file, 
I'll run the SACCC list landscape node command with the configuration file option pointing to the location of the custom file and I'll also use the debug option to verify that the CLI communicates with command central over the custom HTTPS port 8191. As you can see in the output, the CLI successfully obtained the landscape nodes information from command central using the custom port we set in the properties file. If you open the custom properties file now, you can see that it has been updated after it was first used by the CLI and the password we marked with add secure is no longer in plain text. This concludes our tutorial. Thank you for watching.